after you, sir. Zach, how does it feel to be on camera? It feels amazing. My face is on camera. There's legit one girl in there Dude. by herself, and she taped those signs up so that people would come in. <laughs> that is outrageous. She's Dude, you were just going. Her sweatbands with her little bun up and on her laptop. Dude, I'm so intrigued with these videos. Really? Yeah. Is this your first time seeing it? Yeah. His first time seeing the channel. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. Oh man, this is good. Got a lot of code here, Ben. Dude, this is gonna be one of those videos you just don't wanna watch. It's <laughs> gonna be a lot. Just like all over the place. Got Yo, Ben Yum, what's up? Yo, I just got Twitter today, dude. But I can't eat until everyone eats. So we gotta do a question today. All right, guys. So today we're going to do a question that I got during my Facebook interviews. This was in like my first rounds, which I actually passed. So didn't you uh, not get an offer from Facebook? Uh... All right. So today we're going to do the question total occurrences of K in assorted array. So like I said, this is a question I got um, during Facebook interviews, and it's actually a really good question that demonstrates the process of walking through um, from a bad, bad solution to the most optimal solution. So for example, we have three cases here. We have an array here and k equals one. So we return the answer is three. We see that one occurs three times. k is one, it occurs three times. k is three, three occurs one time. k is, k is one. It's an empty array, so the answer is zero. So the key information in this question is the array is sorted and it's a search problem. These are two key things we're going to have to factor in when we're factoring in our approaches. So moving along to the actual approaches. So there are three approaches to this question. So when I first got this question, I really didn't know what the optimal solution was, but I immediately knew if an array is sorted, the first thing you should be thinking is binary search, which is very fast. But first I said, how would we do this just the naive way? So we could do a linear scan. So taking this example, if K is one, we could just do a linear scan. Our first occurrence, we grab that index and then we scan. Once we see the last occurrence, we know we've counted three elements. This would take O of N time on average and it would take constant space because we wouldn't be creating a time or space that would scale with the input. So this, this is linear time always, but we know that our best solution is going to run in log n because it's binary search. So let's move on to what I propose next, which is approach two. We can do a binary search, which runs in log n and then do a linear scan to count the elements until we find a different element. So we would do a binary search and get the zeroth index here. And then we would do a linear scan upwards. So this runs in log n, log n for the first search, and then O of n for the linear scan, and then it'll have O of n time, just like our first solution, 
And our binary search, if we do it recursively, we'd have log n for space complexity because of stack space, but it would be O of one. So the thing is, this approach is okay, but it's not the best approach because if we have our worst case, if we have an array of all ones and k is one, then we're going to be touching n elements and automatically our worst case becomes linear time. And then instantly my interviewer told me, what if we could do this in log n time only? In average case, log n time. So instantly I knew it had to be binary search all the way. So then what I thought is, how I need the last element. How am I going to get that? And then what I realized was, what if we do two binary searches? What if we get the first occurrence and the second occurrence? And then we can see that that would be index two, that would be index two, index zero. So then how, we have three occurrences here, what, how can I mathematically get that? So then we could just do two minus zero, which is two, and then add one because we're indexing off zero. So then we would get our answer of three occurrences. So that was the optimal solution. And then that's basically what went through and what I ended up coding. So just to nail down the time complexities, this is going to do two binary searches. So it's going to be log n plus log n, which is just going to stay log n, big O of log n. And then recursively, if we do recursively, we'll have log n because of stack space. But if you do it iteratively, you're going to have constant space. So this is a very fast algorithm. It's going to run in log n having our search space, and it's going to have constant space if we do it non-recursively. So now that we've nailed down the approaches, we can go and look at the code for this. Oh God. This is the code. I was really rushed to write it and I didn't have it like written down on my laptop. So I literally had to make this as I walked in the room. So it's kind of sloppy, but it gets a point across. So our main function up here is get occurrences of K. So this is our main function. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to get the first occurrence. If we don't find the first occurrence, why would we search for the second occurrence? Then we're just automatically going to... <laughs> what was that? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then if we don't find the first occurrence, we can stop. We can say, we found zero occurrences because why would we search for the second one if we couldn't find the first one? And then we find the last occurrence and then our answer is the last occurrence minus the first occurrence index plus one, like we deduced before in the approaches we just looked at. So that's the overarching algorithm. And as you can see, I abstract the binary search away. I abstract all the other details. This is our high level algorithm. This is how we're going to answer the problem. And now we can get into the nitty gritty details of the actual search. So basically I have an enum here. Just, I don't want to use a um, magic num. They're called magic numbers. When you try to encode a certain meaning using numbers or booleans like true or falses, I just said search type first and last. I like using enums. That's a very way to avoid magic numbers and stuff like that. So here we have binary search. So what we pass in is the array, the item we're looking for, left and right, and then the type of search. As you can see, for finding the first element, we pass in the search type, find the first element. For this, we do a search type, finding the last element. Both of them are binary searches, but we just tweak the base case, as you'll see. This is our base uh, check. So if the array, if the array is empty or our left has gone past the right, then we know that the, either the element is not even in there or we've searched the whole search space and left is past right. So at that point, we can just return minus one. We have not found an answer. So then we get the midpoint. This is actually key. You don't want to do left plus right divided by two. You want to do, you want to do this. You want to do left plus right minus left divided by two, because this is prone to overflow. This is a really subtle point, and it, it, it's really impressive if you tell your interviewer um, that this is prone to overflow, this is the right way to do it, because it shows you have an attention to detail. So now we go into the binary search. So we grab the midpoint, and if our midpoint equals K, then we're going to do processing here, but let me just show you the other else ifs. If, if our mid middle value is less than K, that means we need to be gr find values that are greater. That means we need to go to the right. Our search type stays the same. We make our left bound, the middle plus one, we make our right bound, the, we leave it the same right, and then we pass in these two. This takes our search to the right. If array mid is less than K, we need m greater values. So that's why we take our search to the right. So it's the opposite for left. So in this case, the final else statement, it says if, if our element k is 
if our array index, the, the item at array mid, is greater than k, that means we need to lower our value. So we keep left the same, and then we do min minus one as our right bound, and we keep the search type the same. And then if all else fails, then we just re return negative one at the end. So that's, that, that's the end, end stuff, but the meat of it, the, the main part is this part. What if we do find k? What if we do find the element that we're looking for? If our search type is the search where we're trying to find the first occurrence, do we want to just stop? If we find one, k is one, do we want to stop our search? We can clearly see we don't want to stop our search. So we see that we want to keep going to the left. When do we know to keep going to the left? So now let's return to our code. So we know we want to keep going left when the item to the left, if we have anywhere to go, if, if, if we have nowhere to go, if this is the first element in the array, we're finished. We found the first occurrence of K. If the item to the left of us is the same as us, then that means we want to keep searching. So that's why we go into the if statement. So if, if there's an item in bounds to our left to, preve pre to prevent uh, over, over indexing on our array, if, if we can go to the left, and if the item to the left is the same item that we're at right now, same value, then we continue our search because we're not finished. There's lesser indi indices to our left that are of the same value. So this is if the search type is first. If it's search type last, if we're looking for the last occurrence, we say, is the guy to the right of me inbound? If he is, look to the right, and if where I'm at is the same as the guy, the, my right neighbor, then I need to keep going to the right. So I keep searching to the right. So if both of these fail, then we're just going to return the middle index. That means we've either found the first element in the array or we're in the, we're in the midst of the array and we have an element and the element to the left of it or the right is different. We've found the first or last occurrence of the item we're looking for. So this is the gist of the search. Um, so this is basically what the algorithm pans out to. So we have log n time because we're having our search space and we have O of one space. Um, in this case, it's log n space because we're recursively um, having our search space and we're going to have log n um, stack uh, frames on our, on our stack. So now let's go to the takeaways from this problem. So what do you need to take away from this problem and this solution? So first off, if, it, if an array is sorted, immediately think binary search. If an array is sorted, you automatically have the invariant of the array being sorted and you can cut it in half, they'll stay sorted and you can do binary search on it. So that's something you should tell your interviewer because it's, it's fast and, and your inter it'll impress your interviewer because you immediately shows that you're thinking about it. So also be vocal to your interviewer about where you're at in the process. I started out saying linear search and then in the middle of it, I was like, wait, binary search and then a linear search and then the interviewer was like, no, all binary search. So progressively, you're going to slowly get towards the answer if you just vocalize what you're thinking, vocalize what is going on in your mind. And then finally, this is just, I was rushing and there were like four or five parameters in that function. It's bad practice to have any more than like two parameters in a function, but in a lot of these coding questions, you see um, three to five parameters. Uh, it, it works in the interview, it's fine, but in real life, this is not really a good idea and it's bad practice coding. So I was just in a rush and that's why I panned out that way. But yeah, so basically this is the solution. So we find the first occurrence, if we don't find it, we're finished. And then if we do find the first occurrence, find the last occurrence, do the math, and then we have our answer. So that's basically it. That was a lot, I'm sorry. Is it still going?